Striking Scorpion 82 is sponsored by three great games. Warhammer Combat Cards, a card game featuring your favourite miniatures from the 40k universe. Knighthood, a role-playing turn-based game where players control a warrior, fight through levels to gain armour, weapons and loot. And finally, Honkai Star Rail version 1.2, a space fantasy RPG where players experience the galaxy's infinite wonders filled with adventure and discovery. All three games are free to download and play with links in the video description below. Begin your adventure now and enjoy the games. Right, welcome to this painting tutorial for the Tyranids. I've got the new Tyranids Assimilator here, painted up in my red colour scheme. I haven't abandoned the reds, I've been waiting for new models to come along to paint up. So I painted up one of the big models, the Assimilator. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do the basing. Uh, so full tutorial on that, and also how to paint up the red Tyranids. Now you can see there's a slight enhancement on here. I'm going to bring them up to the next generation. Updating the basing on the scheme, uh, and then this glowing green that you can see will cover all of that. Uh, in this video step by step just follow along step by step and there's no reason why you can't achieve the same results uh, that you see here in this video so the next stage then we'll go through materials that you'll need for this project so I'll leave a list of materials in the video description for you as well uh, so uh, building the model and then the key one of the key parts of this is sprays to give you foundation colors nice and quick so obviously the foundation color is going to be red there's two options that you can go for. Uh, there's Army Painter Pure Red. That's going to give you a very strong red. That's the one I usually use. Another option that you can go for is Sanguine Red. Uh, so this is from Colorforge. Uh, they are with the outposts. So you'll be able to get a hold of these sprays from them. Link for them in the video description below. Uh, but Sanguine Red. It's a bigger tin. You're going to get good mileage out of it. The coverage on it is excellent. It's very comparable to Games Workshop sprays. Uh, so uh, a big fan of these. They, they, they cover well, they're good quality. Now it's a deeper red. So it's up to you. It's not really gonna affect the color scheme too much, uh, if anything at all. So it's entirely up to which one you want to use. It shouldn't make too much difference. Then the, the primer color for the base is just like a medium dark gray. Uh, so a little bit darker than sort of medium grey, just a bit below that, but not too dark. Uh, the colour I use for that is by Montana Gold, 7070, it's called Stealth. Uh, so I use that for the base. And then to finish the whole project off, I'd, I'm still a big fan of Munitron Varnish by Games Workshop. It's, in my opinion, it's the best one out there at the moment. It gives you a, a nice finish, uh, a little bit of satin to it, so it's good on metallics and so on. It won't spoil those by making them too matte. Then moving on to colours, in no particular order, uh, Ceramite White, let's grab some of the colours here, uh, Troll Slayer Orange, one of the key colours, uh, Evil Sun Scarlet, uh, Sisal Flash Gits Yellow, uh, Dawnstone, as well as, with the updated basing scheme, Storm Vermin Fur. Uh, this is an old paint, Scorpion Green. I think it's called Moot Green now uh, for that one. And uh, uh, then that's for the, the updated green, which is optional. You can do this extra bit if you want to, uh, but it's the Moot Green. And then Bialtan Green, the wash. Uh, metallic for the basing work, which will cover. Uh, it's Iron Breaker I use for that. Uh, for the basing, still Legion Drab. Uh, and then for the washes, both of the basing and for the model. Seraphim Sepia, I'll use that on the metallic work and then for the some of the basing work and then for shading the whole model. Uh, it's Agrax Earthshade. Now, as far as basing materials go, I had, previously I was basing these in grey and then using just like a normal green flock. You'll see it in the videos, I think it's contrasting too much with the red, and I've gone off that a little bit. I've been revamping my basing uh, into more of a uh, burnt dead grass kind of 
uh, effect instead. So there's green tones running through this, but there's sort of autumn kind of colours going on as well. It just tones the green down so it's not too strong. And this works out well for this colour scheme. It means that the, the slimy effect that I'm doing stands out a bit more. Uh, so you can get hold of these from any... I usually go on eBay and it's, the suppliers seem to change quite often. Uh, you're looking for uh, grass tufts and it's schemes like uh, winter grass tufts, autumn grass tufts, as opposed to summer green, spring green, uh, and so on. And when you buy from suppliers, they're going to be changing up uh, each time. So uh, it's those general shades. This particular time, I got these from War Paint Figures. Uh, if you can find them on eBay, it's six millimeter winter, six millimeter dead grass, 120 regular grass tufts. There's all sorts of players out there. Uh, all sorts of suppliers out there that will better replicate these shades for you. So wherever you, wherever you can find them, but that's the general kind of tones that you're looking for. Two tones going on just really makes the base a bit much more natural. Also two tones of flock. Again, similar, like a dead winter grass colour going on here, like almost a, a brown kind of colour going on with that one. And then uh, more spring kind of green, but not stark. Uh, here, so it's like a deadness to the grass, but two different shades going on as well. Quite subtle, but it just makes the basing look uh, a lot more natural. So very happy uh, with the updated schemes. That's the flocks and static grass tufts that you'll need for that. So that's the sprays, the paints, and the basing materials that you'll need. So we'll shift down, we'll move over onto the, the opening stages of this. Uh, the uh, the, the spraying is the first thing that comes up. So build the whole model, uh, do the basing, and then we'll get into the sprays is the next stage. All right, so model's built and ready to go. First step's going to be to give this model a spray of the, the red. And this is just going to give you a massive head start. You're just getting that color straight onto the model. That's going to give you a foundation to go with. So it doesn't matter which. I guess I'm going to go with the red first wrap it up and protect it and then spray the base with the gray that's the order i can do it you can choose which way you want but the best way is not to touch this rim so i'm thinking maybe spray red here first of all uh, and then uh, hold up here and then spray around for the base not touch it as much that's the kind of uh, option i think i'm going to go for so I'll spray it with the red on this one uh, so uh, just like short sharp bursts rotating the model around going underneath and on top uh, and then just make sure I get into all the nooks and crannies. Two light coats going around, just to give that a nice solid red finish should be a, a good first step. So we'll get that done next. All right, so model sprayed. It's a good idea to wear gloves when you <laughs> you're spraying your models up. You can see my thumb's been sprayed up there as well. Uh, but that's the the red looking particularly good. Just just gives you such a head start. So that's completely dry. I usually use like kitchen roll you can use or cling film or something just to wrap around the mod the parts of the model that you want to keep. I'll repaint this red later on. That's, that's not that's not going to be a problem. But you could wrap around those if you want to. But the the main parts to wrap around the model across here. We'll make repairs and so on if any grey gets on. But the next stage will be to spray around this base uh, with this stealth grey. Now this will give you a darker tone for all of the grey. It'll give you a nice foundation for the metallic work we're going to do. And it's going to give you the, the, a nice colour for the base trim as well. So it's going to seal in the base nicely for you and give you a big head start on that as well. So I'm going to spray that up next. That's the next stage. All right, so spraying's complete with the grey. It comes out looking something like that. As you can see, some grey's gone across the red. That's not a problem. But the, the key part here is to get the red on across the model uh, and then the basing work. It's shaded it all nicely for you. Uh, and then the base rim colour's been done. Uh, as well so it's just giving you a massive head start both with the, the basing and then with the model itself so looking good I would say to spray the grey first doesn't matter too much but uh, I would go grey first and then cover it up uh, and then spray the red on top and that just keeps the red away from the base completely because you do get some spray down going in amongst the sand it's not too bad and it's not really going to affect the model at all but that's what i would say uh, in hindsight with that so i'm going to work on the base next so i'm going to move i'm going to depart away from my usual gray basing color scheme that you see on the rest of the red tier and it's going to go for this more dead grass brown tone gray going on which i've been doing for my towel a lot of people have been asking how to do that basing people have been asking on instagram so i'm going to show you in this video 
uh, how that basing is done. So the same process uh, with the previous basing, which is spraying with the grey. Uh, we're now going to start doing some highlights and effects. So uh, I'm going to take Dawnstone first, and then once that's dry brushed on, we'll start mixing it and then highlighting again with uh, some ceramite white being added. So I've got a generous enough size brush. I'm going to move quite quickly. Add, and I don't need to be too neat for this one for a number of reasons, but we'll explain this as we go along. So I've lifted some brush onto the paint, putting it onto a palette, then scrubbing the grey into the bristles of the brush. And then I'm going to start putting this onto the, the base of the model here. I really want to make sure I don't have too much grey on the brush. This looks okay. There's rocks here, so I'm going to catch those. I'm just using the bristles just to scrub that grate in. If I get any onto the, the legs of the model, it doesn't make any difference, no problem at all. And for this color scheme, I'd, usually I'd keep the rim clean, but I'm going to use a different grey to finish the rim. So this time around, it doesn't matter if I get any onto the rim, I'll just leave it and not bother trying to wipe it off or repair it so it's quick enough. So I'm going to move quickly around. So I'm just going to go around and add, highlight the rest of this, but as you can see, it's going very fast. So the grey's gone on. Next, I've lifted some with a separate brush from Ceramite White. And whilst the grey's still on the brush, although quite dried out, add, I'm going to start mixing the white to it. So I'm not going on with pure white, but like a greyed a grayed out white across here. And then this one, I'm going to flick a bit more across the basing, not as intense. And it's just going to catch the edges of the stonework. And again, it doesn't matter that it's going onto other parts of the model or onto the trim. We'll tidy that all up later on. I don't think there's enough white on here, so I'm going to intensify this. I'm going to lift out a bit more uh, of the ceramite white. Put it onto the palette. Scrub it into the bristles of the brush. And we should have a, a lighter version. This is better. But really flicking across the model here and just catching the edges of the stone. You can see it nicely going on there. But this is this is fast. This is a large base. Because I'm not having to be too neat, I'm able to move quickly and freely around the model. So I'm literally just going to do this right now. And work around the back here. Can catch the edges of those rocks. All the way around. So, and then I might just do a tiny bit more, bit more white into the bristles of the brush, and just go for a final flick around the model, just to catch an extreme highlight on that. And now it looks something like that. It's all highlighted up, very very quick. That's your base highlighting done. So the next stage, that's. that's I'm sorry, we're going to move on to uh, repair work and putting some of the colours onto this. All right, so next colour, you can see some metal work on this model, just with this platform that he's standing on. There's like a pipe coming out the back here as well. So it's a very simple, simple, straightforward process for this one. I'm going to take my uh, iron breaker, and I've got a brush here that's kind of medium in size. It's not too neat and tidy, I want to get good coverage nice and quick. Uh, I want to be generally neat with this, so any metallic areas I want to cover with that. So really it's the top of this platform. And I'll make sure I catch the edge of it. It's going to flow a little bit onto some red areas, but we'll go neat with that later on when we bring in the red. But the main purpose of this is to get this platform covered in this silver. So as you can see this brush is generally neat and it's letting me fill this in nice and quick. So I'm just going to go around the model with that. You can see it going on. Catch this pipe here, and that'll be the metallics done for this basing work. All right, so looking something like that. Next up, I want to go neat with the red. So we've got this large, obviously from the same high fleet, so we're going to match this in the same process, painting process for this and this. Uh, so I'm going to tidy this all up. I'll paint it all in red here. Spike coming up the ground. Go around the feet and do that nice and neat as well. I'm using the same kind of medium brush, size two. It's quite a rough looking one. The point's not that great. But if you give it a good coverage, I can be pretty neat with it. 
If there's any really tight areas that really do require neatness, I'll just drop down to a smaller size brush. We'll move it nice and quick, but be neat this time. So, yeah, you know, the gray color that we've sprayed, that base color is, is pretty good as a foundation for colors going on. The metallics go on just nice onto gray, and the red goes on all right as well. But I'm being, I, can, I think I'd be neat enough with this brush. So it's going on like that. It's going to be shaded and washed well anyway, so your, your edges don't need to be absolutely perfect. This technique's all about effect and process here, just to get you effective results, but quick enough. So there's not much else to say really. I'm just gonna, as you can see, I'm just gonna work around neatly uh, here and I'll cover the feet and the spikes uh, and get that done next. All right, so we're looking at something like that. As you can see, I've had to go to a much neater brush to pick out these sort of slimy webby bits that are on the metal and on some of the stonework. Uh, and then just use the general brush for the rest. So that needs to, once that's completely dry, uh, you're getting close to start putting washes on. It looks quite sort of bland and stark at the moment without all the washes and effects and highlights and so on. We're really at the very basic stage. So with this technique, I'd, I add in some more earthy kind of colors to the base. So I've got some Steel Legion Drab. I'm gonna take some on the end of my rough brush. And again, uh, I'm just gonna just scrub this out a fair bit and then I'm not doing a full-on dry brush there's some areas that I want to just scrub it into see if you can see it just there so just patches where this is going and a little bit some onto the stonework and it's just gonna start to muddy and dirty that a little bit this will help the, the brownie colored rusty uh, grass, static static grass and flock going on later on. It won't look as out of place. It will blend in much nicer with the base because of this bit of uh, brown that's being added on. So I'm just working, this is very, very quick. And I'm doing it in patches, I'm not highlighting the whole thing. Just choosing a little patch, little crevices and patchy areas. It breaks up the gray quite nicely. So I'll do that at this stage. I might dash it a little bit across some of the stones just to take away the, the stark of the grey. Uh, I don't want to go too over the top with this, but that's looking pretty good. So we're now looking something like that. So that's got to dry completely, must be completely dry. So we go on to the washes, it's going to be very, you know, it's got a liquid going on here. So I want these, these colours, especially the metallic, because don't want that running. Don't want the red running as well. This needs to be completely bone dry. So let that completely dry up, and then we'll go on to the uh, wash stage next. Right, so the next stage, you must make sure this is everything's completely dry here. So this is bone dry, I've left it for a, a good while. So we're going to move on to some washes for effect, because everything looks quite plain at the moment. So Seraphim Sepia, nice rusty kind of colour, but not too strong on the pigment. So all of the uh, metallic areas are going to coat that in the Seraphim Sepia, ignoring the red for now, I'll come back to that later. And then just sort of the, the nooks and crannies of the base, uh, we're going to add this onto the base as well. So we've already got some Steel Legion Drab to give it a dusty earth kind of colour in patches and then we're going to strengthen this to uh, add in this Seraphim Sepia. So again, medium kind of size brush here. And this should go on really nice as a nice kind of rusty effect onto the metallics. And it can go over the little red bits on there. And you should see it going on rusting it up nicely. So where the metal meets the the base and the rocks, the, the crevices, the cracks of the rocks, I'll flood this in a little bit. And then through these cracks here. And then it down at the base. I'll just add that in there. Uh, surround and put it around areas like the this piece of chitin sticking out the ground. Just really Sort of working that in just to, to blend the whole thing in. Just go around the other side and then some more. Around these rocks. Just rusting up the whole thing. Not too much, just there's areas of grey showing through. Uh, but definitely nooks and crannies and, and cracks and crevices. Just fill out with that from sepia. And any metallic anywhere, I I'd, I'd just give a coat, a full coat of that. And just work that in. So that's going on like so. So I'm just going to continue around the base with this colour, or this wash. 
Right, so that's done. Uh, wash on, you can see the metallics are done. Basing shaded up quite nicely. It's all starting to blend in, some effect been added. So before we move on, that's got to, again, it's got to dry completely. So let that dry entirely, we'll move on to the next stage. All right, so next stage, that's dried off. Next stage is Agrax Earth Shade. So this is uh, a brown wash, it's like a, a darker brown, it's not as rusty. So we're gonna use this on the metal again, just to strengthen it. Uh, not really the rest of the base, that's shaded enough. Uh, and then it's the same shade, the Agrax Earth Shade, which we'll then use around all of the red across the entire model. So this is gonna be a shade uh, across the whole model. So I've got a large enough brush here, size one, I think this one. Uh, and again, I'm just going to flood this uh, onto the base, the metallic work. Pushing it into all the recesses where the metal work is. And just a general coat. That'll give us a nice depth to the rusty metal work here on this model. So hopefully you can see it going in and the, the depth of it. So I'm really just going to work it into base here and now I can overflow onto the actual red as well so not too blotchy just a general coat of this and then just working it in so all the details here so now you're starting to see the, the shade going on I'm just going to flow around the model So, like so, so that's that. So I'm just going to go around and do the rest of the model. As you can see, there's lots of nooks and crannies. It's going to take a while. I'm just going to work the brush in work it around the model and, and get that shaded up. All right, so looking something like that, you can see it's all shaded up. It's quite toned down a dark. This is the darkest it's gonna look. We're gonna build up from this now uh, to uh, get our highlight colors and do the chitinous armor and so on. So I've gone back to Evil Sun Scarlet for the red. I'm gonna take a, a large enough brush I think this one should be okay. You can go finer if you want to, but I think if I keep this nice and controlled, not too wet on this, I can dry brush this across. So I'm now looking to dry brush uh, the model. Pretty much all of the red. Now I'll start on this tail. This is going on okay. This is meant to be quite a quick technique. So I'm dry brushing across the tail across the armor. The main parts to pick out is like, see here on the leg, all the sinews and bits. So by dry brushing across, it will just pick out those details. Chisholm assignment will come to later, but it will still help just to pick that out anyway. But I'm just highlighting, maybe you can see the difference already. So the darkness there on that leg. And let's get that so you can see. And then the red, starting to lighten the whole thing, but keeping that darker shading because you're doing it as a dry brush. So I'm just going to repeat this across the model, oh, including all the chitinous armor as well, because I don't, I don't want it too dark when we try and put the chitinous effect right, on that. So we'll lighten that as well. As you can see, I'm choosing the larger brush because it can be done so, so quick. Now, recess is like deep in here, not going to bother. That's dark, and I want it to stay dark, so that's all good. Uh, yes, all the claws. Being careful not to go too rough on things like these spikes coming up because they could literally just snap. So I'll, I'll be gentle when I come to those. There you go. I've done about a quarter of the model already. So I'll just press on and just highlight the rest. Okay, looking like this. Hopefully you can see that's lifted it right up. It's really starting to pick out the details now and you've got nice deep shading. So the next stage is an extreme highlight. I actually haven't washed this brush out. It's very dried out but not entirely washed out. Uh, and I'm going on to Troll Slayer Orange. Going to lift some from the pot and put again put it onto the palette. And again, I want to just I'll go on to a bit of tissue here as well. I don't want this too strong. 
So this is an extreme highlight. This is for catching all your extreme edges, which you know, is very prominent on a model like this, full of spikes and, and layers to it. So I'm going lighter this time, not gonna scrub this one as hard. And again, just going across the entire model. If I go too hard and too much orange goes onto this, you'll, you'll move away from red and you'll end up with uh, orange too strong. So I'm just going for a bit of an extreme lighter highlight. The towel I'm gonna leave, I've got a nice uh, two coated dry brush red on that and I'll leave it. So I'll just, I'll, I'll avoid the towel. Um, I'll pick out the bits at the end though. Might catch a little bit of the, the towel just here. I could do a, a little bit, just gently feather that on with the dry brush. And then we'll go into all of it. So we've got the, the armor, all the spikes, the arms. Again, avoiding the temptation to go too heavy, otherwise you will turn the model looking too orange. So, again, you see the speed that you can move at with this. Just give me a nice highlight again, it's just lifting the model. I'm going to catch a little bit of the tail. That's giving me a nice effect on there, if we can see that going on. Now I lift out, I pick out the details just a little bit more. Just lift and lighten the whole model and then just really pick out the detail on this, which is you know so much detail on these new Tyranny models. So now we've got all our light and shade done for us, looking something like that. I'm gonna go around again, but again, just keeping this as an extreme highlight. Didn't catch these spikes yet. In the rib cage, bit around the head and the face. A lot of it's chitin and bone though. Just not too much, just want to catch those edges. I'm just going to keep going here because I've pretty much finished. Just a bit more, almost. Just like a stronger version of the orange. I just went a bit stronger on this leg. There we go. On the arm. Not forgetting the base. So I'm going to drag it across this. Underneath, and on here, the spike both sides. Okay, now there's some like slimy uh, spaghetti type bits going across the metalwork. So I'm just going to go to a fine brush and just run those across and just, just highlight those carefully. And then that'll be all that highlighting done. We're very close to a stage now, we're going to go on to like the feathering technique, multiple layers to work on the chistiness and uh, armor parts. But the main sort of bodywork is now pretty much finished. Right, if you can see the detail on the base, that's just putting the paint over the, the top edges right, of that slime stuff that's on there. And that just lifts that nicely. So before we go into the rest of the model, I think we'll highlight the metallic work here, this platform. It's been shaded twice already. So we'll just go back to our iron breaker, put some out onto the palette. And I've got a size two brush here with not a particularly great point, but it's good. Good coverage on this brush, good size. Uh, running the paint onto the palette, and then I'm just going to try and catch the edges uh, of this by just dragging the brush across the metallic work, and that will I'd highlight that for us. And it, once again, it's a fast technique. So I want to be neat. I don't want to catch any of the red because we're finished with that. And I don't want it to be too wet, as you'll, you'll start filling in the shading that you've done. So just a general dry brush working my way around this. There's some red has gone onto the metal work. Uh, so uh, I will just correct that like so. Don't have to be precise. It's just rusty metal. So you're not exactly painting some specific pattern it's you know, quite free to generally give this a highlight here and this is going on well enough that is about it as this pipe here 
to highlight, which I did get some red on, so we'll highlight and just correct that at the same time. And it just catches the edge for us quite nicely on that pipe. It's happy enough. I think we're close to the base being finished. We're ready to go on to, I think it's called feathering the technique. So we're going to go on to the chest and this armor. I'm going to, going to do multiple layers to build up the armor that's on this model. So it's quite time consuming, especially on monsters. But it's the main effect for this. We've done all the prep work. We've got our shading done, our inks done. Much of the basing is complete as well. So we have made really good progress. Uh, but the next stage will be this feathering technique. So I'm going to show you on a small part of the model. We'll do... We'll do these bits, these three plates across here. So the first color is your Troll Slayer Orange. We use that for the extreme highlight. This one's quite thin, it's not thick, which is good. You don't want it really strong. Um, and then I'm taking from the pox. This is nice and thin here. People ask about thinning my paints. And I take straight from the pot whilst the paint is new. If the paint's half used and starting to get old, add a bit of water and I still take from the pot if I need to go to a palette. Um, and then that's about it. Just water to thin things down so it's uh, nice and straightforward. So, what we're looking to do is the hard edge is where the, the main highlight's going to go and I'm going to fade out upwards. So, it's just like drawing, doing lines, and it's partly sculpted for you already. The sculptors have, have put these lines on it, so you can always follow those. So it's stronger down the bottom and then weaker, weaker there at the top. I guess as you see, I guess as you see this, these stages build up, you'll get more of the idea of, but you're looking at a nice thin brush. This is just a, this is a layer brush size. It's called a layer brush, there's no number to it. Uh, but it's got a nice point, nice sharp point to it, but not too small that you're running out of paint. I'm wondering if you can see that there. But that's the just these stripes, these lines on here, always going in the same direction, just following the line of the chitin. You're sort of leaving gaps in between to get that kind of effect. The most coverage is going to be with the orange. We'll then go on to yellow, uh, which will be a bit less, and then finally. It will be yellow mixed with white for the extreme edge highlight and that will give us that armor effect. But orange is the first stage. So wherever there's uh, the sinew kind of stuff going on, we're leaving that's already finished. We're just looking for the chitinous armor and also any spikes is going to be painted in the same process. So there's one here at the back of the leg. I'm just going to paint over that like so. So I'm going to go around the rest of the model to get an idea of how it works across the rest of this model. All right, so orange is complete around the model. This does take a while. It's taken about an hour. This is obviously a, a much larger model than many of the Tyranids, so these kind of things are gonna take a while. It's the main technique here, and the main sort of part of the model that's gonna pop out uh, with this chitinous armor. So orange is done. I've made a start on the next color already just to show you before I start painting what to expect. So it's uh, flash gets yellow. There's a nice flow on this so it's a newer paint and there's a good flow to it. And I've put it, already put it on just to illustrate the kind of brush strokes you're looking for. It's the same kind of size brush. Uh, it's nice brush with a nice tip to it. Uh, nice damp brush. This is a Sissel Detail brush. And then I'm um, Putting it onto the brush like so, so it's got a nice point to it. Uh, and then we'll just do this knee cap or this knee here. So just long brush strokes, deliberately leaving uh, some of the orange from underneath showing through, and then this direction across here. And again, just leaving gaps with the orange showing through like so. This is the second layer, and there'll be a third and final layer to finish off, but that's the kind of effect that you're going for, just to create this uh, kind of grained 
consciousness effect. It's sculpted on there for you. You'll see it already. The sculptors have, have given you the grain, the direction to go as you're just following that. But you're going for a, a not as heavy with the orange. So you're now seeing uh, some of the orange underneath the yellow, but looking like that. And then just go back over all the other areas that you've done in orange. Now with the yellow, you're really starting to lift uh, the model up. So again, I anticipate it's going to take about an hour or so, about 50 minutes. Uh, but it's a major chunk, major part uh, of this model done. So I'll press ahead uh, and keep going with that. All right, so yellow's complete. It's quite a stark change looking at now. You really are bringing the, the colors to life. I've started on the white already, just to again show you what the next stage will look like. Uh, but just following, and there's your guides. The rule is any kind of spikes, weapons, uh, claws, Chitinous armor gets that effect and the rest of the cartilage type stuff on the body the tower just leave it with the red That's already been highlighted. So look at something like that The next stage is the third and final highlight. So that's gonna be uh, taking some ceramite white and Then we mix that with the flash gets yellow, a little bit of flash gets yellow just to give us like a, an off white like a yellowy kind of white Just to finish off the idea is you see elements of those three shades. So you see the orange some of the yellow and then the final white highlight uh, going on. So that's what it looks like. You're looking to be very neat with this one. This is your final finishing touch. So to crisp up your edges, uh, make sure like around the, the base of the foot there, you can see I've got really neat around the base just to really sharpen that up. It's your final finish. So it's worth just taking a little bit of extra time uh, to get that right. So there it is. We'll do a little bit uh, here. So let's bring this across. So you can see the palette. So I've got some ceramite white taken out of a separate brush. Now I'm going to take a little bit, not very much, flash gets yellow. Mix that in, quite watery. So I've got like an off-white color going on. Something like that. Give myself a nice tip. And we'll do, we'll do this bit in here. So running the brush down, those brush strokes again, so you get used to doing this. Uh, and then you get that kind of effect. I'll make sure that there's gaps in between. Don't want it solid looking. So mostly solid, but gaps that you've got that nice feathered pattern. As you can see, it's not too slow, just a lot of area to cover. And then I'll go around the edges here, make sure they're all nice and tidy and crisp and clean, because it's the final finishing touch. So we've got something looking like that. This claw, make sure the tip is nicely covered that white, and they're starting to look really good. It's starting to get a finish now, the model really starts to pop. So, I'm just going to go around the whole model, do the same thing. Uh, now would be the time to, uh, with the eyes, I've picked out with yellow, and I'll just leave them like that. Then, with the teeth, you're going straight on with white, uh, the color you've got here, and then also uh, some of the little tiny spikes and bits. You can see there's a few here at the bottom of the tower. I'll just pick those out of the white. There's no point in doing three colors on those. Uh, little spikes here at the end. These little nodes and bits here you can pick out just straight on with white. There's no need to do triple colors and, and waste a lot of time uh, doing that. So you'll, I'll, I'll cover this and be able to see uh, exactly where I've been. But again, you're looking at the yellow here, it's, it's very strong, uh, but you'll see a, a big transformation once this white goes on to the model. So that's the next stage. I'll work my way around uh, the whole model of this stage. All right, so the off-white, uh, the white with a little bit of yellow is done, and the model's looking something like this. It's pretty much finished, so we're going to look at the basing next, but I'm just going to rotate this around so you can see. This has been a challenge because you've got long lengths going on here, but it still worked out right, so you can still see some yellow going through, uh, showing through a bit more on that, on that longer piece. Uh, I've picked out the teeth now on the face, just there. Uh, just using the off-white to pick out the little bits, spiky bits along the back. And you can see it's all been done there uh, on the basin work as well. But that's the, the model mostly done. So quite a transformation with that process. It is time consuming uh, for sure, but this is the, uh, the process here and this is the result that you can get. So I would say with the white, uh, the off-white color, keep it nice and fine, keep it watered down, so you've got a nice flow to it, and you get a little bit of semi-transparency to it, so it's not too, too strong. Uh, you can spoil it if you go too strong with your shades. 
So we'll finish off the base next. So we've got our uh, two different lengths of uh, static grass clumps and then our two shades going on as well. Uh, so we're going to uh, do this next. So I put some PVA glue on a palette, just blobbed it on here. Uh, I'm just going to take a, a rougher brush. I usually plant the tufts first. So it's good fun doing the planting. Just take these uh, and then I just uh, dip them in the PVA. Now they are adhesive already, but I like to PVA glue them in just to really put them in position. So I'm going to plant one just there. Then I'll take the other shade. Do as random as you want, roughly 50 50. I'll put another one just here in front of it. Then just keep planting. And I'll put one here next to this rock. So that's going on there. And then I will, I'll do a little section here just to show you. Take some PVA glue and then uh, you can do uh, merge in the tufts. So just fade them in with the glue. Like this. Uh, separate clumps. Again, just keeping it nice and random. I'm not going to put anywhere up here. This is just like freshly landed this um, and smashed it to the structure. So I'll stay away from that. And then I'll work a bit around here. And that will do. That's most of the front down. I'll stop at this point. Got my two tones going on. So with these, I will put some in here. And we'll do a little bit of the same one across the other side. I've left some areas though un undone, that'll be for the second shade. Then tap this off, the excess, back into the tub. Go over to the next tone, and then drop some on the areas that haven't been done yet. So just in there. And there's some in here as well. Just re tap that in, and then again bash the excess off back into the pot. Now looking at something like that. So I'll go around and do the rest. Uh, I'll blow off the excess, wipe the rim, and then we'll paint the rim and then the model pretty much finished. So that basing's done. Just in the middle of an experiment here. I've always wanted to bring, introduce a second color for this color scheme, just to upgrade these. I've been drawn towards green. It seems to be working all right. So uh, you see the injector across here, this harpoon. I've added in Add some green just onto the and introduce a spot color just to uh, break up this very large color scheme. You'll see it on the artwork as well with the ones that go into workshop painted the Leviathan color scheme. But you can see uh, here on the injector, it's got like an luminous green kind of color coming through just to show there's some different kind of slime poison being generated. So I've introduced that here. Uh, I've started to put it onto the basing work as well. Uh, so yeah, I can just focus in on that bit, just there. So two colors that I'm just working with uh, is your BLT and green, that's your wash, and then I combine that with uh, scorpion green or moot green, I think it's called now. So taking some of that on the palette and then taking some BLT and green as well. And I'm sort of working this into uh, any sort of slimy areas, so uh, this weed, I'm just going to flood a little bit of that in. Now it's watered down, and I can water it down with water, or I can use the BL Tan Green uh, to blend it in as well. Now I'm just creating another colour, another area of interest on in this thing. I always like the idea of Tim has been like poisonous and slimy and so on. They, sh they should be. So I'm just blending that in there. Like so. Two simple colours and it wants to be a quick colour scheme so I don't spend too long. I'll introduce a little bit more. But you're adding another layer of interest now. There's some, some ooze and grime coming out of this thing. Nice. Nice organic kind of colours. 
Other colours I thought about using perhaps was purple, introducing that, or purples and pinks. Uh, but green seems to be working okay. It's a classic sort of slimy colour. And I'll introduce. So if you want it weak, you just use the BL10 wash. If you want to add a bit more strength, a bit more vividness to it, then introduce your moot green. So putting the wash in. And then I'll add in a bit of moot green here. Now, I had doubts about this because green and red are contrasting colours, but maybe that's to your advantage. It's really going to stand out. You see that effect now on the harpoon, it's just drying off. I've also done it on the tongue. It's really brought the face to life, I think, just to bring in that spot colour. Now, this is optional. You don't have to do it. I'm quite happy, though, of how this is turning out. Uh, it's quite simple to do. You're just adding a, a little bit of interest and extra colour onto a colour scheme that's quite strong and plain that does break it up and I'm going to strengthen this poisonous thing here really make it a feature so the eyes drawn to that there's something extra going on yeah I'm happy with that nice okay so the last thing to do a little, little bit more of this see how much interest that creates on on this part yeah, I think it brings it to life she may see me roll it out for the rest of the red tyrannies as I revamp them, need to revamp the basing on them. This is the updated newer version of the basing, which I'm much happier with. So we've got the base trim to do next. Uh, with our Storm Vermin Fur, and that will finish the model. All right, uh, further development on this, adding in a little bit more uh, of the moot green onto the base for a kind of an acid kind of effect now. And it's working out quite nice uh, on these holes uh, here in the base as well. If you can see that, uh, so I've introduced the green, the wash, and then the moot green just to catch the edges of that, like this acid has melted this deck. A little bit more as well. I've put a, a gentle glowing green right up at the forehead of the thing as well. So there's something glowing out of this next generation Tyranid. Just added an extra area of interest to this model and it's grown on me for sure. So happy enough with that. Storm Vermin further next. So one coat should do it because uh, you're, you're just on a very similar shade of grey. So this is just a neatening coat to finish off. So a good size brush. And I'm just going to go around the rim with this colour. Two coats if you want to. There's no harm. I'll maybe do two. That'll go around and that tidies the whole thing up for you. That finishes off the basing in the model. All right, so that's the model done. Uh, that basing, I can do a, a second coat on that later on, but he's finished now. And I'm liking the introduction of that green. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. See the other way your eyes just drawn towards that? It creates a nice area of interest. Um, so that's him done. There's the basing. So model complete. A bit of effort with this one, different techniques. You've got two options now for the Tyranids with painted tutorials. You've got this red color scheme here with the new enhancements, the new basing. We've also got the High Fleet Divivan options, whichever you want. You can change these colors around. So you could change this out for shades of blue, yellows, oranges, um, whatever shading you want to do, whatever colors, you can just swap them out. Just follow the same technique. But uh, that's the updated tutorial for my red Tyranids. People have been asking, I haven't abandoned them. Uh, we're going to introduce some new models. Uh, but now we've got this uh, nasty beast uh, to lead the way for this Tyranid force. And he can join ranks with the Swarm Lord, who I've called the Decapitator. This is the Assimilator, so perhaps the, the two can work together on the battlefield. So that's the tutorial. That was to, to finish this thing off, will be a light spray of Munitorum Varnish uh, by Games Workshop, uh, just to seal the whole thing in, to protect the basing uh, and the model. Uh, with that varnish, that'll be him finished. So keep a look out for him in battle reports on the channel. And that's the tutorial. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.